Hey, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really well. Today, I really want to replicate with all the gear that I have, the Black Album Supertone. It's held in regard to me as like, it's sonically perfect, this album. I think it's just so good. The drums, everything about it just gel together, all the instruments. Bob Rock was a recording genius working with these guys and we know they had an arsenal of gear in that studio. They were in there from about eight or nine months, from October to June or something. And we've all seen the year and a half tapes and we know that like there was a Mark II C Plus, there was Triaxis, there was Mark IVs, there was Marshalls, there was just about every amp and every guitar at their disposal that they could use and create such sonic complexities within that that album it's 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 a masterpiece in itself and i still hear it to this day and it just like tears out the front of all the all the speakers that you hear it from if it's a crappy radio at work it just it still sounds really good so we'll do our best today and just try and replicate that tone with what little gear i have i'm using my lamb guitar which is a solid mahogany body with a ebony fingerboard and active amg 8181 pickups it, it gives off a similar vibe to that of James's Explorer. It's not the same, but it's pretty close. For the Mark V that we're recording with, it's a Mark V 25, and I'm actually using the 2C Plus mode, which is on the red channel. I usually use the green channel for recording Metallica for that real crunch. But uh, for this, I, I just find the Mark II C Plus mode dialed in a really nice tone, and it crunches up nicely as well. For the cabinet, we've got the Recto 112 Mesa cab with a vintage 30 inside, and I love this cab. It's my favorite one I've ever had. It's super fast to mic up. I know exactly where I've got to put my mic, and uh, that's an SM57 in the front, just off the cone and under the former that you can see going across for the slanted cab. And then we go across to the pedal board, the main tone that comes out of the pedal board to make the rhythm channel is the six band EQ and I'm scooping it out again and boosting up the treble and the bass a little bit. Other than that, we've got the Boss NS2 and I'm running it with the four cable method. So it's putting a squeeze on the effects loop as well as the front end and it makes things really quiet. It's really nice. I do find, however, with it, when it's not engaged, there's a volume drop. The MXR carbon copy delay is great for the solos and I turn off the MXR six band and I've, I've got the Zach Wild OD, but any OD will just do for this. Keep in mind when we just go through some of these tones that this is just one single mono track and when I'm recording or trying to actually replicate it through a recording, we have pan left and right, you know, centers, harmonies going on. And it's that whole army of guitars that really makes their tone. But just as a single mono tone, this is pretty damn close. <laughs> There's a feature within Logic that I didn't realize until just recently that there's a spectrum analyzer built in and you can essentially take a snapshot photograph of your guitar signal and it shows it to you as, as a range across the entire frequencies. I then did the same analysis with uh, in a Sandman guitar track on its own and just laid them over the top of each other and really I was blown away just how, how close they were. Uh, so now we'll just try some of the solos and I turn off the six band EQ turn on the carbon copy delay, turn off the noise suppressor and turn on the wild overdrive. So the original bass was used for that recording and the guitar track was actually this guitar played twice and panned full left and right just for the backing track. Sometimes in those interlude style sections like Metallica do often, you just want to thicken up that rhythm playing a little bit. So for that I've actually turned on the overdrive and turned the gain right down. 
And uh, this is what happens there. So there you go, guys. I think it's really amazing that we can replicate these tones so accurately in our bedrooms without these fancy studios and, and massive budgets. But look, as always, take care. I've really enjoyed it, and I'm just going to keep playing away.